Hey folks, welcome to Baseball Ireland's new state-of-the-art indoor training facility, Strike Zone. Uh, in the last coaching course we got some feedback that some people were interested to get some more basic videos just about the basics of the rules of baseball. We appreciate uh, baseball is new to a lot of people in Ireland uh, and it can be intimidating if you don't understand the rules or the basic terms that are being used in the game. So. I guess this is our attempt to at demystifying baseball for everyone in a, a series of videos that just go into the basic concepts of baseball. We call it the Irish Baseball Academy's Baseball 101 or hey, what is this whole baseball thing anyway? So let's go for it. So in this first episode, we're going to talk about the objects of the game, innings, defensive positioning, and the playing field. I don't know what you're thinking. Frank, what's the point? Well, baseball is pretty complicated, but for the people that want to skip through the video, let me just break it down into a fundamental basis. So the in team is in until the out team gets them out. Then the out team is in, they both do that nine times, and that's game baseball. And if that didn't do it for you, let's break it down even farther. So, in one inning, you have one team in the field and one team hitting. The home team is in the field first, and the away team is hitting. Another glaringly obvious question is, when do they switch? When the home team records three of the away batters out, they then get a bat. It's up to the away team to then record three outs of the home batters, and then they switch back. And that's an inning. So, adults play in nine innings, kids play six. The ultimate goal is to score more runs than the other team, so whoever's up by the end of nine innings wins. If it's tied, they keep playing more innings till somebody wins. Okay, so now that we understand what innings are, we're going to take you on a little tour of the ballpark. So here we have a lovely drawing of exactly a ballpark, sometimes called a baseball diamond or a baseball field. It's not called a pitch, but hey, we're in Ireland. If you want to call it a pitch, you can call it a pitch, but generally it's called a baseball diamond. So let's see, as we work our way around the diamond, some of the, some of the terms that we have to deal with. Uh, first of all, we got here what's called a home plate. Okay, that's where the batter is going to stand, in either on the left or right side in the batter's box. Okay, there's also a catcher's box here, and the catcher goes in there. We then have three other bases. We have first base, we have second base, we have third base, and back to home plate. If a runner legally goes all the way around, all the bases, and back to home, they score one run for their team. Okay, what else do we have? This here we have uh, infield grass. This is our infield around the bases here. This is the grass area, this is the infield dirt. We have our outfield way out here. We've got a home run fence. Some fields might have what they call a warning track along here. Now we have coaches boxes, so this is where the first, first base coach would go. Coach box on the third base side. On deck circle, this is for the, the batter who's coming up to bat next, warms up in this on deck circle. We have a dugout for the rest of the team. Both sides. Now, here we have what's called the tram lines. This is, a, this is where a runner who's going to first base should run in between these tram lines if there's a play being made on them. If they're outside those lines and the ball hits them, they could be out for interference. Then we have foul lines here. This is our right field foul line and our left field foul line. As we'll explain later, the batter has to hit the ball 
out into the field between those foul lines. Now, we may also have bullpens at a field. These are areas for new pitchers to warm up before they come into the game. There might be a scoreboard that records runs, hits, errors. We'll explain a little bit more about that later. Here at the back, we have a backstop, some kind of fence to prevent balls from going out. And finally, this is our pitcher's mound in the center of the diamond. And on that pitcher's mound, we have the pitcher's rubber, where the pitcher starts his feet. So we've covered what the field is. Now let's put some people on the field. So for one team that's playing defense on the field, it consists of nine players. Six of those players go on the infield. Three are in the outfield for a total of nine players per team. So number one is the pitcher. He's the dude that throws the ball. To this guy, number two, the catcher. From there, you have first baseman at first base who's represented by the number three. Then you have second base that's not on second base but next to second base represented by the number four. Third base all the way over here for some reason. Number five and shortstop at number six. So that's your infield. For the outfield it just goes around and clockwise. Seven is left field. Eight center field and nine Right field. Okay, so that's our defense, number one to nine out in the field. We also have one to nine on the offensive batting team, and that we call the offensive lineup. So we'd list numbers one to nine, and each player will be put in in the order they're gonna come up to bat. So we got Sam, Paul, Paddy, etc. All down to nine. Now the reason we have numbers for all these players to denote them is so that in the scorebook we can write a result against that batter. So say Sam is the first batter and he comes, comes up to bat, pitcher throws a pitch and Sam hits a ground ball along here to the shortstop. The shortstop fields the ball, throws it over to first base and throws Sam out. Well then in the scorebook we can denote that as a 6 to 3 out. And when you see that in the scorebook, you know that was a ground ball to the shortstop thrown over to the first baseman to record the out. Okay, so you've got your nine defensive players, you've got your nine offensive players. What about substitutions? Can I bring somebody off the bench? Uh, first of all, defensively, you're allowed to move these players in the field around any way you want. If you want to swap your center fielder for your shortstop, you can go ahead and do that at any time, no problem. If you want to bring a player, a new player off the bench, then you have to remove that player from the field and bring, bring on the new player. And that player you remove from the field is now out of the game. Their day is done. Unless you have what's called a re-entry rule, which we allow in the, in the uh, B League in Ireland and also at youth levels, where you could have that player who got substituted is allowed to re-enter the game later on. So then on the offensive side, we can also make substitutions, okay? But the batting order here is sacred. So if, for example, we wanted to substitute Paul and we put Aoife in to hit for Paul, if we had a re-entry rule and Paul was to come back into the game later, he can only come in for Aoife and has to resume the exact same position in the batting order. That's all fine and dandy, but let's get back to the objective of the game, and that's scoring runs. That only happens when the batter makes it all the way around the bases back to home. The batter does not get points for each base. They have to make it all the way around safely back to home base. And then the team that does that the most times, gets the most points, ultimately wins the game. All right, well, that's Baseball 101, Episode 1, Object of the Game. Thanks for tuning in. Join us next time when we're talking all about balls and strikes.